I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It is with joy that I welcome you to worship on this Sunday, July 5th. This is the 14th Sunday of Ordinary Time, our 16th Sunday of being apart one from another, connected by the spirit of the living Christ. As we gather to worship, let us share together in the call to worship. Come to our God, all who hunger for life. For it is God who nourishes us at the table of grace. Come to our God, all who are worn out by life. For it is God who provides the rest we need. Come to our God, all who are weighed down. For it is our God who carries our burdens with us. Please be called to confession with these words. Fretful, agitated, longing for more and more of this and that, we spend our lives in a never-ending, never-fulfilled search for that which satisfies. But Christ knows that we will only find the end of our journey in God, and so invites us to that peaceful place known as God's heart. May we let go of our burdens of anger, hurt, and sin, so we can find our rest. Please join in the prayer of confession, praying together as a family of faith. We are so skilled at being in control, at taking charge, Sabbath taking God, that we are not very good at resting. We think we have to be constantly busy, so we have no time for you. We are trained to be extremely productive and so create our harried, stress-filled lives. Forgive us, shalom, giving God. Help us to let go of our distractions so you can act in us, calm our creaturely activity so you can recreate us. Help us to follow Jesus not only into discipleship, but into the, our rest with you. And now let us enter into a time of silence as we individually confess our sins before God. Amen. It sounds so simple, we think it's too simple. But which is the burden you would choose? Hate or love? Anger or forgiveness? Pain or peace? God invites us to receive the gifts which make it possible to have lives of faithful obedience. This is the good news. God forgives us and takes our burdens from us. We can let go of them and welcome hope, joy, and grace into our lives. Thanks be to God. Amen.
thank you, Anita and Linda, for sharing your beautiful God-given talents with us this morning. As we prepare to hear God's word, will you pray the prayer of illumination with me? Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth. Make us hungry for this heavenly food that it may nourish us today in the ways of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. This morning's Old Testament lesson is the first three verses of Psalm 1, reading from the Message Translation. Listen for the word of God. How well God must like you. You don't hang out in the sin saloon. You don't slink along dead end road. You don't go to the smart mouth college. Instead, you thrill to God's word. You chew on the scripture day and night. You're a tree replanted in Eden, bearing fresh fruit every month, never dropping a leaf, always in blossom. Amen. Our New Testament lesson this morning comes from the 11th chapter of Matthew, reading verses 16 to 19 and 25 to 30. Listen for the word of God. Jesus said, to, but to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John the Baptist came, neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came, eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, holy God, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill this sanctuary and our homes with the blowing winds of your love and your guidance. For holy God, you truly are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. And Jesus says to us this morning, come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. We 
long for rest, don't we? Maybe now more in these days than maybe we ever have before in our lifetimes. In our July newsletter, our parish nurse, Laura, helped us to understand this season with the words quarantine fatigue. We have been separated from people we love. We have been separated from our church family for 16 weeks now. We long for rest, don't we? And then you add to that the necessary conversations about racism and policing and justice. And these conversations necessarily weigh on our hearts and they challenge us to listen in new ways. We long for rest, don't we? And then as if there really wasn't enough going on have you heard about the murder hornets? Like there wasn't enough and now there's murder hornets? And just a couple days ago in the news, the possibility of a swine flu, a new swine flu developing? We long for rest, don't we? We long for peace that is soul deep. We long for our weariness to be eased. We long to just stop and let our heavy burdens drop from us. We long for someone that can really understand what our lives are like as we are trying to live these days in the here and now. And Jesus says to each one of us, come to me. Come to me and you will finally be able to rest. Come to me and the peace that you have only glimpsed can surround you and hold you. Come to me and you can lay down your weariness and let it go. Jesus says, come to me and let your burdens fall down on the ground beside you. It's okay to set them down because Jesus says, I am watching over them and I am watching over you and I understand the living of these days. These three verses from Matthew's gospel are a gift to us. Can you let yourself receive them? Can you let yourself believe that there is a place of complete rest that is specifically for you as a child of God? Can you let yourself trust that your weariness really can come to an end? Can you unclench your fists and that tight, tight hold that you have on all your problems and often a lot of other people's problems? Can you unclench your fists and let them fall away from you? Jesus says to us this morning, come to me. Can you do it? Can you trust in Jesus' love that these aren't just words, but a real invitation that is dress, addressed specifically to you and addressed specifically to all of us? Can you do it? Can you be strong enough to let go? Strong enough to admit that you just can't do it all alone? Can you be strong enough to let Jesus have your entire list of worries and fears? Can you let Jesus have those things that put 
the knot in your stomach and the knot just tightens, those things that get your heart rate beating and it just goes faster and faster, those things that catch your breath in your throat and you find it hard to find air and you're not even wearing a mask and it's hard to find air. Can you let your lists go? Your lists of those things you haven't accomplished yet, those reasons that you're not good enough, those people that you worry about at 2 a.m., the past hurts that are still haunting you, and the present realities that scare you even more? Can you be strong enough to be weak and let go? Can you be strong enough and so weak enough to know that without Jesus' compassionate strength, you really can't make it? not in any real and true sense of the word. Can you be strong enough to let go, to stop, to rest? Jesus says to us this morning, come to me and you will find rest for your souls. Jesus says, come to me and slow down. Rediscover your resting heart rate. Actually, physically, stop. Sit down in your favorite chair. Dust off the hammock or that chair you stuck out in your yard and you look at it outside the window but you never go and stop and sit in it. Go and sit at that favorite spot or that favorite, favorite bench by the river. Stop and just be still. Can you stop? Stop doing, stop worrying, stop fearing, and just be still? Be still and know that God is God. Be still and know that Jesus loves you, specifically you. Be still and know that you are God's beloved son, God's beloved daughter. And no matter what, there is nothing that can separate you, God's beloved son, God's beloved daughter, from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So rest. Rest in the light of Christ that surrounds you. Rest in the peace that can cradle your weariness, can cradle your fears, your sorrows, your burdens. Rest and be still and let that be enough. Let that be everything. And then when that rest has truly, truly replenished you, when the peace and love of Christ has put things into a new and a heart-healthy perspective, when the love of God is the first thing and the only thing that you are holding on to, then, when that's the case, let yourself hear the rest of Jesus' invitation. Jesus says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Take a moment and let yourself imagine that yoke 
of early farming or a yoke that you may have seen once on an Amish or a Mennonite farm. That yoke that yoked oxen or horses together, the crossbeam with the two harnesses so that the oxen or the horses were side by side pulling together to pull the heavy load. And now imagine yourself yoked side by side with Jesus. You are sharing the journey together side by side. Jesus promises that the yoke is easy and the burden will be lighter when you are walking together. Jesus doesn't put a collar or a yoke on us and lead us. Jesus says, I will share the yoke with you, beside you, and lighten the load. Jesus shares the yoke with us, beside us, and we are never, ever alone. Jesus shares the yoke with us, beside us, and then we can continue to know deep rest and deep peace. And the yoke is easy because Jesus has shaped it to fit us specifically. The burden is light because we are sharing it. Jesus has shaped for us the very best way for us to walk side by side with him. And so this morning, Jesus says to each one of us, to our heart of hearts, come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Will you come? Will you come and trust the peace and the rest that are soul deep? Will you come? Will you come and share your burdens and be yoked side by side with Jesus? Will you come and be still and know that God is God? Will you come? Will you come and rest because Jesus' love is strong enough? Will you come? Amen.
have just two announcements this morning, and the first is a reminder that today, Sunday at 11, we will have our second Sunday gathering. This will be a time when we will share the peace of Christ with each other. We will share joys and concerns and pray together. And on communion Sundays, like this communion Sunday, we will share communion together in real time. Each Friday, the invitation to that Zoom Sunday gathering will be sent out to you. And this past week, there were 17 households who gathered together, and it was so good to see each other's faces and hear each other's birthdays. We had three birthdays that we sang to, and complete with cha-cha-chas, so it was truly a good First Presbyterian gathering of sharing life together, and we look forward to more of you gathering with us for those, those times. My other announcement is just a joy that I would like to share this morning, and this week on July 9th, I will be celebrating the 31st ordination anniversary of my ordination to parish ministry, and the stole I am wearing today was a gift from my home church the night I was ordained, and so it comes to me from Columbia Presbyterian Church in Vancouver, Washington, where I did most of my growing up years in that church. So it is a joy to celebrate that anniversary with you this Sunday. Trusting in the Spirit of God who connects us together in the heart of Christ, let us join together in prayer let us pray. God of grace and power and might, we are so thankful that you gather us together, whether we are in person or watching on a computer screen or a television screen or through a Zoom meeting. Your love reaches out and connects our hearts, and we give you thanks and praise for that this day. We entrust to your care this day those who have been in the hospital this week who are returning home, and we ask that your hand of healing would continue to be with them. We continue to pray for all those who are on the front lines of this world pandemic here in our country and around the world, and we ask that your hand of protection would be with them, that your peace and comfort would be with them as they care for so many who are in need. We continue to pray, Lord, for our troops here in our country and around the globe, and we ask your hand of protection on them this day. We pray for our first responders, our firefighters, our police, and we ask in this time of transition that your peace and your protection would be with them. And holy God, we would ask for ears to hear and hearts to understand as stories are told by people of many colors about what it means to live in America, help us to listen well and to work well for peace and for justice together. And holy God, on this weekend of the 4th of July, we thank you for the freedoms that are a gift in our lives. We thank you for the freedom to worship when so many of our brothers and sisters around the globe live with persecution and having to hide their faith in you. We thank you for the freedom to love, to work for justice and peace, to care for those you have put into our lives. We thank you for the freedom to care for each other, for our families and our friends and the strangers who walk into our lives. We thank you for the freedom to care and to work and to speak for those who aren't free. We thank you that our freedom is found in you in your love for us, in your choosing the way of the cross for us, 
that we might be free from sin and death, freed to love, freed to come into your presence here on earth and when we come home to heaven. We thank you for all the gifts of your love as we pray together the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Notre Père qui est aux cieux, que ton nom soit sanctifié, que ton règne vienne, que ta volonté soit faite sur la terre comme au ciel. Donne-nous aujourd'hui notre pain de ce jour, Pardonnez-nous nos offenses, comme nous pardonnons aussi à ceux qui nous ont offensés. Et ne nous soumets pas à la tentation, mais délivre-nous du mal, car c'est à toi qu'appartiennent le règne, la puissance et la gloire pour les siècles des siècles. Amen. Beloved children of God, this is the Lord's table, open to all who come to love and serve Christ. Scripture says that people will come from east and from west and from north and from south, the south to sit at the Lord's table in the kingdom of God. And until that day, when the world unites around that table, we gather at this table where we are united to each other, where we are united to Christians around the, the globe, and we are united with those who have gone before us into heaven. This table has been set for you and you are invited by name to come, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen and amen. As we gather at the table, I invite you to join me in the great prayer of thanksgiving that you will find in your bulletins. The Lord be with you. And also with you. People of God, lift up your hearts. We lift them to the one who invites us to rest in the heart of the Trinity. People of God, give thanks to the one who offers you rest. We bring our thanksgiving to God, who sings to us of peace. Let us pray with hearts filled with joy. We bring our praise to you, God of rest. On the first morning of creation, you whispered of peace, and the cacophony of chaos was stilled. You walked softly through the grasses of the earth and all creation sang of your goodness. Created to find our peace with you, our fretful desire to be in control led us into a nomadic existence of rebellion against you. Prophets spoke and angels sang to invite us home, but our stubborn pride only grew stronger. When the burden of our sin became too great for your heart, you sent Jesus to carry it for us. With those who have found their rest in you, with those who long for their burdens to be lifted, we join in singing your praise. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of the weary. All creation celebrates your name in all generations. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who yokes himself to us. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, God of our footloose hearts, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Savior. Watching our restless striving for more and more, he modeled the life of self-denial and service. 
Seeing us weighed down with the burdens of sin and death, he picked up his cross, carried it to Calvary, where he died to give us life. As we remembered his life and his rest in you, as we celebrate the good news of lightened burdens, we speak of that mystery we call faith. Christ came that we may have life. Christ died so that the burden of death might be lifted from us. Christ was raised to new life, so grace might be revealed to every generation. Christ will return to yoke us to God through all eternity. Pour out your spirit of rest and shalom upon this bread and this cup, that these gifts might nourish us, as we find our rest in you, may we become restless in service to your children. As we engage with you in solitude, may we build a community of justice and righteousness. As we listen to your silence, may we speak out for those whose voices are ignored by the world. Then when we gather with all who have found their rest with you at the table of the Lamb, we will sing our praise for all eternity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God in community, holy in one. Amen. Amen. I remind you that on the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he said to his disciples, take, eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I invite you at this time to take the bread. This is the bread of heaven. Take and eat. In the same manner, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and he said, This cup is the cup of a new covenant, sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it, all of you, as often as you do this. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death and resurrection until he comes again in glory. This is the cup of our salvation. Drink deeply, all of you. Will you join me in the prayer following communion? Let us pray. In the end, as in the beginning, God is God, loved by us, wanted by us, praised by us, served by us, filling us with the gifts of the Spirit, making us whole for the good of the earth. For bread and cup, this place and this time, thanks be to God, for the peace we are promised which the world won't destroy, thanks be to God. For the hope of heaven on earth and the final song of joy, thanks be to God. Amen. As we prepare to leave this time of worship, I send you out with these words. We leave with the presence of the holy so we may show others the way to grace and hope. We leave with Jesus who draws living water for us 
so we can share it in the heat of summer and in the bitterness of winter. We leave with the Spirit who teaches us how to listen so we may hear the cries of the lonely and the voices of all who are ignored. And as we are sent with those words, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May our God look upon you with favor and give you peace and rest. And the children of God responded, Amen.